Welcome to Jar Your Mind. This is Joey, and I am going to do a reading. It's about four pages out of the book, The Master Game, Pathways to Higher Consciousness by Robert S. D. Ropp. And we are talking about the three types of attention. And after, after I do the reading, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read this awesome, awesome few pages for you. Okay, awareness and attention. The practice of simple awareness is impossible without control of attention. Attention is to awareness as the oil in a lamp is to its flame. While there is oil in the lamp, the flame persists. Once the oil is exhausted, the flame goes out. Control of attention is the one function that man possesses, which, which may be said to confer on him a certain amount of free will. He can direct his attention. But his power to do this depends upon his possessing a certain kind of energy, the supply of which is limited. Each day, on awakening, he has just so much of this energy as a battery, after being charged, contains so much electrical potential. His inner work each day depends on the conservation of this energy. Once it has been squandered, it is hard to replace. A man's level of consciousness can be measured by the freedom of his attention. In the state of identification, he has no freedom to attend. He thinks he has, but this is one of the illusions which this state imposes. Actually, he is a slave to whatever stimulus happens to have taken his fancy. I could not put the book down. I could not take my eyes off the game. I was absolutely immersed in what I was doing. In these and countless other phrases, people describe the condition of identification and the loss of freedom to attend which, is, which it imposes. A sight thrilling or spectacular, a story real or imaginary, has taken our fancy and swallowed us in the process. Our inner space is totally occupied with the subject matter about which we are reading, the spectacle we are, wa the spectacle we are watching. There is nothing in the least bit voluntary about this form of attention. There is nothing in the least bit voluntary about this form of attention. We are caught up like flies in a spider's web, manipulated, directed, and enchained. Look at the faces of people at the racetrack, a baseball game, a bullfight, a prize fight, any spectacle of a flamboyant or brutal kind. There is nothing behind the face. It is empty, a mask, the house is vacant. This is enslaved attention, enslaved attention. In this condition, inner silence and simple awareness are lost, and the whole field of consciousness is occupied by a victorious enemy. In the state of enslaved attention, the vital force is squandered. The whole day's supply can be lost in a few moments. No less costly in terms of energy is dispersed attention, attention which wanders all over the field of awareness. Drag now here, now there, a feather for every wind that blows. Fickle, feeble, ungoverned, it flits about, changes color like a chameleon, changes shape like Proteus. The eyes rove aimlessly, the ears flap like shirts on a clothesline. Scattered impressions pull the attention about like dogs fighting over a bone. There is a total absence of inner stability. This state drains the organism of its strength insofar as the power to maintain awareness is concerned. There results a trance-like condition, a state of semi-hypnosis that borders on the pathological but is not recognized as such by psychiatrists because a large majority of the quote-unquote well populations pass their lives in this state, including the psychiatrists. Waking sleep, hypnotized sleep, walking sleep, identification are different names for this same thing. In this state, man does not really know who he is, where he is, why he is, or even whether he is. A sleepwalker. If man could be aware of this state of sleep, how eagerly, how urgently he would struggle to awaken. For waking sleep is dangerous and dismal. Waking sleep is inner slavery and inner unrest. Endlessly men prate about freedom and shout and demonstrate and riot and demand congressional legislation and civil rights. All in vain. The fetters are inward. The bondage is spiritual. The name of the great enslaver is identification, and the result of his dom domination is waking sleep. So I can't help but think about, you know, everything going on 
in our world right now. Right now it is June, it's actually May 29th, 2020. And we are being shown the news in a way that, you know, we, we're given to seeing it, to see it. And it is our choice of what news to listen to, if at all, or if we want to, you know, go within our own minds and see what is true to ourselves about what is going on. What do you fill your attention with? I just wanted to share that with you about dispersed attention and enslaved attention to realize, you know, to, to not judge, to judge yourself. This is a human experience, so we're going to get distracted and we're going to have feelings and we're going to, you know, you want to have fun. Like one thing, one thing I have, I remind myself too is Joey and I stop and I say, Joey, (laughs) stop taking life so seriously. Yeah, because I'm so interested in learning about the the amazement of it all, right? That I can get serious because I just, oh yeah, you know, that nature of me says this is serious stuff. But but really, that's when I like to listen to somebody like Alan Watts that says, you know what? Do the dance, you know? It's a dance. It's a game, and that's what jar your mind. That's why I call it the game of life, and um, it's about having a fit mind and your inner athlete because. It is conditioning and it is, but it is a game and, and it really comes down to it being a game. But my thing is, is whose game are you playing? Play your game, play your beautiful, awesome game. What, what DRAP also talks about is impressions. When impressions come, which is basically circumstances, life is coming at you in, in, with impressions. And you can react to them or you can respond to them or you can, you can block them. You can just say, no, I don't, I, don't ex- I don't really have any interest in this impression that is being impressed upon me. This doesn't affect me. This has no effect on me whatsoever. And so I think about right now with well, everything that's going on and the coronavirus and, and, you know, I can get easily caught up in how I feel about it and my thoughts on it and my truth in it. And I have to step back because I can get lost in the attention of looking at the truth as I see it and that, you know, people that I surround myself with and listen to believe to be true. But if I get lost in that attention to that, then, then I don't feel good. You know, it doesn't really build up. It doesn't really build me up. And it, and in the end, it's, again, it's a game. And I have to remind myself not to take life so seriously and remember that this, that everything is happening in its perfect form and understand that you are one with this universe. No matter what is happening in this universe, you are with it. You are one with it and you are part of it. So what are you doing to be part of everything that's going on? What is your role? What is your role and what is your, what do you want your role to be right now? And that is up to you. And you have all the power within you to decide what role you want to play. And that's about where you put your attention. It's about going within. It's about shining your light. And, and this master game, the master game, this book, it's called the master game for a reason. There is a discipline involved and it is not like always easy. It's not easy. When the coronavirus thing hit, I was angry. I was so angry. And, um, you know, my attention was all on all kinds of things. I'm not going to get into it. But, you know, I really had to step back and say, what's my role? What's my role? What am I contributing? What am I playing? And can my energy change things? Can my energy be significant? And of course it can. And so can yours. And what energy are you bringing to this situation? And believe and have faith in the power of your creation and of your light. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me and listening, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.